Hey, welcome back to another video. I'm so glad you're still here. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk more about evangelism video format and the flow of your message. All right? If you've never done video message before, this will be a good guideline for you. As I say again, you don't have to 100% follow what I say. All right, you can f go all your own style. It doesn't matter. But I'm just sharing you my personal style of uh, how I preach online. And you can follow my example and modify it and change it to your own style. It's totally fine with me. As I say, there's no pressure to follow everything I say. But let's pick what you like and use what you like. Okay? So everyone's different. All right. So this is what I personally do. Okay? All right. So I always start with a hook that is in the first 15 seconds. For traditional pastors to do that, it's like, mm, that sounds very catchy and uh, deceiving. <laughs> Some people say that. Well, online preaching is very different from physical preaching. Why? Because online is all about catching people's attention. It's very different from physical meeting. Physical meeting, the people are already there. They expect to hear your message, right? They go to the church. They are wanting to hear a message. Whereas online, you are they are not wanting to hear a message. So you have to catch their attention. You get what I mean? So I hope you understand that point, why I'm doing this. Okay, so... You need to catch people's attention, then they will hear a message. If you don't catch people's attention, nobody will bother to hear your message. <laughs> okay? So, uh, yeah, that's the reason why. Okay? So, the content of your message must be within three points, if you can. I have seen people preach like 10 points, 5 points, like so many points until you become pointless. <laughs> so, keep it three or less, can be one or two, even better, because people don't remember all your points sometimes. Especially TikTok, you, can't, you don't have much time. Normally, I only preach one point. Uh, on TikTok. Uh, I see many preachers don't do this. Is that you need to have application. Whatever you preach, how does it apply to your life, to their lives today? So let's say I'm preaching a sermon about, let's say, hatred and forgiveness of hatred of that person. How am I supposed to forgive that person? So you give them an example. So you say like, maybe a prayer, Lord, I'm sorry that I hate this person. You know, give me the strength to forgive. That's how you can apply. And you must explain why they need to forgive. All right, using scripture as well. Alright, and obviously you want to have a prayer and call to action to respond. Even though you can't see them physically, you, they are all online, but you want to pray for them. Alright, whoever's watching. So that whoever's watching right now, I want to pray for you who have some hatred right now. Alright, if that's you, I want to pray for your father and pray, then you pray, pray, pray. Alright, in Jesus' name, Amen. Then you ask them to respond. If you believe that God has forgiven you, comment Amen below, share this video, and follow me. That's what I always say at the end of my video. And you will start seeing people responding. All right, online. All right, that's how it works. And then when they respond, you respond to them in their comments. All right, that's how it works. Okay, so as I say again, all right, if you're a traditional pastor or leader or Christian that normally preach on the pulpit, right, you don't have to do the hook thing because people are really expecting to hear you. Whereas online, people are not expecting to hear your message. Okay, you need to grab people's attention to want to hear you and make them interested to hear you. That's the reason why you need to have a hook uh, at the start of your message. Okay, so I've given some examples you can use. You can modify them, use them. You don't want to use them, up to you. But this is what I use, all right? So you can say, are you feeling blank? Then you need this. So why is that blank, all right? So maybe, are you feeling hate? Then you need this. Or are you feeling down? Then you need this. Like, what? Then the girls are thinking, what, what do I need to don't feel down? Or are you feeling very sad? Then you need this. You see what I'm trying to do here? I'm trying to get people who will feel sad to hear me, <laughs> all right? Because my message is about the gospel that will help them to recover from their sadness. That's my main intent. It's never about deceiving anyone, okay? So don't get the wrong idea, all right? Or some people like to start off with, let me pray for you today. I know this, if you do on a pulpit, it's very weird. Let me pray for you today, all right? But online is different. If you go on TikTok, right, you see a lot of people doing this. Let me pray for you. Wait, wait, stop, stop. Let me pray for you. You need this. All right, then they start praying. All right, and when you do that, right, you'll be surprised. Many people, many people really need prayer. In fact, one of my videos that got over 30, over 1,000 viewers, all right, is um, I start out by saying, let me pray for you. All right, and that's that God speak through my Holy Spirit and, and pray for whoever is watching it. And, right, and it touched so many people's lives. I was also amazed by what I, what, how God used me. So you can do that too. And I would encourage you to do that. Just be vulnerable. Don't care about your own face or whatever. Just speak out. Okay? Or uh, maybe you can say this. Uh, you need this. If you feel down today, 
You see why I did that? If you let's say you are you see this message say, you need this if you feel down today. So if you're really feeling down, you definitely want to hear this message, right? That is my intent to grab your attention to hear God's word to heal your sadness. That is my intent. All right, it's not to deceive anyone. No, no, no. It's always to help people. Okay, or maybe you don't want it to be so direct. You can say three ways to get rid of uh, sadness from Jesus today. All right, that's another way to say it. Okay, uh, another one is uh, what is blank is it's not my it not it's not it not my yeah I spell wrongly. Uh, sorry, I think I spelled it. What is what it might not okay spell wrong. Okay, it's the reverse. <laughs> I think I nearly tongue twisted. So sorry about that. So what is blank? It might not be what you thought. Okay, what is this intention? Okay, so if I say this, what is sin? It might not be what you thought. All right, so this is what am I doing? I'm speaking to Christians that think that they know what is sin, but actually they actually don't know until they hear this message. All right, so I make them curious to know. Or what is anger? Or who is Jesus? It might not be what you think. It's like, oh, I thought I know Jesus. Hmm, I want to find out more. So you, by, by doing this, it may be curious to know more about who Jesus is. All right, you see what I'm doing there? All right, so that's the real intent of this particular statement. All right, it's to make people very curious. All right, you see what I'm doing there? So the next one is the truth about what? About blank that you need today. Okay, so you can fill in the blank. I made the truth about repentance that you need today, or the truth about God that you need today. So someone who thinks he know God would definitely want to hear this message. All right, that's the intention. All these are hooks that you can use. These are all my personal ideas. They can feel free to modify, copy, paste, change, uh, do it whatever you like. I I don't mind. Right, so hooks normally use uh, catchy statements or questions that catch people's attention. That's the function of hook, is to catch your attention and to catch your curiosity so that you will want to hear more. Can you put hooks in between your, your messages? Yes, you can. So let's say you preach for five minutes, you can put another hook and put another hook. Why are you doing that? Why do you want to have a hook after every five minutes so that you make the person wake up? <laughs> okay, have you experienced when you preach for 10 minutes and people start want to sleep? All right, that's because you are not using hooks. You use hooks to get people's attention so that they want to hear more about what you have to say. Okay, so these are all techniques we use to uh, for my messages. All right, so the next one I want to talk about is the evangelism uh, three point content. So you always want to keep your content. So after your hook that you spoken, you need to, to go to your content. So keep it simple, easy to understand. Treat it always as if you are sharing to small kids. All right. I always say this. All right. When you preach and the kids don't understand, means you fail. <laughs> all right. Make sure you use simple language. Don't use bombastic English. I have, I have some pastor friends who are very highly educated. They are professors and lawyers. They insist they need to use bombastic English to look very nice. But I don't really... Uh, agree because what's the point of using you bombastic language when I don't understand if I don't understand how am I going to get impact by what you share and what will make you think I'm interested to want to know more or hear more about what you want to share if I don't understand so key is make sure it's simple people it's able to understand alright uh, lastly always end your message with a prayer and a call to action Okay, what is the call to action? Ask people to do something. So normally, I suggest is pray for people in your video, uh, what God gives you an impression to pray for. Alright, so let's say if your message is about people who have hate, so you say, oh, I want to pray for people, you feel like an impression, pray for people who have anger issues, then pray lah. Let's pray for them. Uh, take note, in online, you don't see them. Alright, what you presume that they are interested, okay? You just presume, imagine they are interested. So who, so, so you say something like this, alright, uh, I want to end this by praying for those people who have anger issues. If you, that is you, close your eyes and pray for you. That's how you start. Then you start praying, 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 praying. Then you say, in Jesus' name, Amen. And then after that, you say these few words I'm going to tell you what to say, okay? So ask them to respond, comment, Amen. 
okay, why do you want them to respond? So that you know they are being impacted by what you share and they are being healed by Jesus. And you see a lot of people, amen, amen, amen. You've got some people even call me the amen, amen uh, preacher. <laughs> all right? As if I want their amens. No, no, no. I want you to respond. All right, so that I know you are being impacted, that I can respond to you. There are people who not just type amen. There are people who send encouraging uh, comments too. They even share their problems, say like, oh, I got this problem, this problem, please pray for me. Okay, then I will pray for them. This is my intent. I want them to respond because they are not in front of me. They are online and I won't know who I'm talking to. So that's how I respond. So I said to share to those who might benefit. So I always say, uh, comment amen share this video and follow me to subscribe to grow your faith. By this, by just saying these three things, these three action, you are number one, you're encouraging and you're encouraging engagement. That's number one. Number two, you're encouraging them to share whatever they benefited to their friends. And number three, you're encouraging them to follow you so that they can grow together with, in their faith with you. That's the intent of these three action. Alright, feel free to modify them in your own words if you want, but this is what I say. Alright, uh, I put all this in the worksheet as well for your reference as well. So you can download the worksheet here in case you lost it, don't know where. Alright, bid.ly slash gospel worksheet. You can download this all over there. Alright, so I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If I went too fast, go back to the start again and go through it slowly on how to prepare a good message. Alright, God bless you and I'll see you in the next video.